I'm granted I'm softer because I'm not taking anything. And then I get to 270, I don't feel bad at all. And then my weight keeps creeping up as I'm clean, 275, I feel okay, 280, 285, 290. And then eventually my weight crept up to almost 300 pounds before I got back on a TRT and my back didn't bother me. What is going on? Brian Carroll here, PowerXStrength.com HQ. If you like my content, please like this video, share this video and subscribe to my channel, Brian Carroll 1306. For more from me, PowerXStrength.com. It's my hub of all things Brian Carroll, 1020 Life and uh, Gift of Injury and back programming and strength training. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, the Superman blue Shield Power Act Strength logo, it's down below. Thank you for the support. Today, I'm gonna to talk about building my 1300 pound squat. Building the first 1300 pound squat in competition. How I did this and uh, what I'm gonna give you, to the takeaways I'm gonna give you that I think helped me. So, you guys know that I competed at 242 for a long time and that was due that, that was due to the fact that I couldn't weigh over 270 without my back becoming stiff, my body becoming stiff. I never had any back pain, but my body would just become stiff. It did not like being over 270 pounds. So that had me in quite a precarious position because I could only be a light 275er or a big 242er. I had a hard time getting under 265 without getting weak but I couldn't weigh over 270 to lift at 275. So I sucked it up for a long time and went after that 270 or 242 record for 2700. The best I hit was 2651. I just didn't get it done. So after a period of time, you know that we were trying to achieve a positive pregnancy. So I came off all my TRT, all my supplements for uh, about a year, eight months plus. And so during this time, obviously, I didn't feel great. It had been a long time since this had uh, been the situation. So I dedicated myself to training raw. I didn't wear any gear except for some knee wraps and a belt. I really worked my core, and I worked a lot of raw training, in particular squatting. So I did this for a period of time. I used different specialty bars, which I think is another good aspect of conjugate training. And uh, it worked great for me. I used a safety squat bar. I used a duffalo bar. I used a cambered squat bar, uh, two different kinds, a monster one and then a smaller one. I think one weighs 95 pounds. One weighs probably about 25 pounds. And um, during this time of my raw training, I started utilizing a lot of bands and chains. Um, so during this time, I'm training raw. I'm using bands and chains. I'm working on getting my quads stronger. And over time, my weight starts ticking up even though I'm not taking anything. It goes from 260 to 265 over some time. Granted, I'm softer because I'm not taking anything. And then I get to 270, I don't feel bad at all. And then my weight keeps creeping up as I'm clean, 275. I feel okay, 280, 285, 290. And then eventually my weight crept up to almost 300 pounds before I got back on a TRT. And my back didn't bother me. So during this time, I was wondering, okay, I get back on. I'm wondering if my back's gonna get tight because you stay leaner, you get tighter when you're taking supplements, all that good stuff. My back felt good. So this adaptation that took place over the year of dropping body weight, getting less tight, and then slowly adding weight over time, I felt good and I felt solid and I felt strong. So once I got back on, I started getting back into the gear again. Uh, I was still in Enzo gear at that time but I really started focusing on using overload sets with chains in full gear, heavy squats on the cambered bar with bands to work on my top end, uh, put myself in positions that aren't the best. I knew if I could squat big with the cambered bar, I could uh, squat really big with the Iron Wolf bar or the Bulldog bar. So I worked on lots of triples with bands and chains. I worked triple bands for, for quite a bit of cycles raw and in briefs. We use the gray band, the orange band, and uh, I'm sorry, the blue band, the gray band, and the orange band. We use triple bands there. 
Then we'd use chains anywhere from 100 pounds a side to 250 pounds a side or something like that. A lot of bands, a lot of chains. As you can see in the video, uh, lots of uh, raw squatting, lots of camber bar squatting with bands. And uh, I got really strong with this added body weight and this added uh, mental approach of not worrying about keeping my weight down so much because let's face it, when you're more worried about your body weight than your strength training and your, and your meat, you're more worried about making weight more than actually competing at the meet, you got a problem. And that's something that really burnt me out over a period of time. So around this time, I started really trying to go wider along with the improvements in my training, my raw squat, my programming. I kind of broadened my horizons a little bit. I started going wider at the advice of a few people, including John Enzer, Dave Hoff, a few other people, which is very hard for me because I have... Uh, very short legs and a long torso, so naturally it does not feel good going wider. But over time, I adapted to this and I kept getting bigger and stronger. Hello, I hope you're enjoying this video. I want to talk to you really quick about our CBD line. Pyrex Strength CBD is 100% THC free, made with MCT oil and CBD isolate extracted from hemp. We have sublingual drops that taste good, made with MCT oil, not cheap hemp oil that upsets your stomach. These balms, these drops, and these products are 100% THC free. You will not fail a drug test, and we have testing on the website. Our balms you want to use two to three times a day in a localized area to reduce pain and inflammation. This stuff works wonders for tight muscles and joints. Then lastly, we have a product called CryoFreeze, which is similar to a BioFreeze. It has a thousand milligrams of CBD isolate mixed with a nice cooling formula that will help you reduce pain and inflammation. So thank you so much for the support. The link's below. Use the special discount code and I'll see you soon. Back to the video. And the last element that really helped me, other than working with Dave Hoff, widening my stance out, getting my base stronger, getting my core stronger and more rigid with things like suitcase carries, stir the pot, the same things that I've been doing for years, I just did them a little more regimented and I got after them with a little bit more purpose. That added girth to my torso, really stabilized me a lot. I changed gear. I got back with Rudy Rosales and Overkill Gear and uh, he fit me with some perfect gear with the stance that I adjusted to. And I put all these things together and I noticed that um, my squat was feeling stronger than ever. And I really, truly believe that I could squat into the 12s uh, at this added body weight. I can't tell you how much stronger I felt at 300 pounds versus 265 or 270. It was just incredible. I mean, I know it's uh, quite a bit of body weight increase, like 10%, but I couldn't believe how strong my legs felt. So during this time, I really worked on the Squat Max MD. That's another secret weapon that I used to really overload my quads. I would put 15 plates on the squat max and just blow it out the best I could and uh, really worked on my top end because that was always my weakest point, my quads, and uh, to be able to drive through the lift. So everything combined with the raw work, the change in gear, the better stance, the added body weight, working on getting faster and more explosive with the bands and chains, powering through sticking points, I set myself up to be in a prime position to be able to hit a big squat. Now, it wasn't all smooth sailing. I had a lot of things to iron out. Being bigger, you know, I had other things to worry about. You know, I wasn't in as good a shape. My mobility went away in some ways, and I had to keep kind of dialing that in and honing that in. But these things are the biggest components on why I hit the big squat along with just being fearless. You know, when you're picking up 1,200 pounds and, and 1,200 plus, even 1,100 plus, you have to be fearless because you know that things can blow apart. You know, I did a, a meet a couple years ago, three years ago or so, where I got misloaded three times in a row, and that crushed me mentally. You know, going up for the, the fourth attempt or so, they kept misloading, misloading, misloading. And one time it was 80 pounds less, the next time it was 60 pounds more than it should have been. I made sure at the meet that my friends counted the weight multiple times to make sure that was good. So that actually helped me remain confident going to the platform that the bar was loaded correctly. So my confidence was good, but still in the back of your mind, even if the weight's counted, you know that your knee could blow apart, my back could re-blow apart, all that good stuff. But 
This is the biggest reason why I hit the 1300 pound squat along with a good crew that was dependable and came up with me in Tennessee. But man, sometimes you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to come off supplements for a bit. You got to work raw or whatever it is you need to. If you're a raw lifter, maybe you need to work in gear for a little bit of time. I know that's something Dan Bell did before he squatted 1100 in knee wraps. He started wearing briefs. Uh, he didn't like the suit very much, but he was able to overload with the briefs. And I think, he never told me this, I don't think, but I think that helped him turn the corner for a squat and overload his central nervous system. So, of course, if you gain size, you get stronger, you dial in your gear, hone in your technique, you're, you're going to go to the next level. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. I kept chipping away over the years, even though I had years of being stagnant, I had years of lifting in lighter weight classes, I rehabbed my back in 2013, but I finally put all these components together and the lessons that I learned from victories and failures, and I put it together one last time for the 1300 pound squat. So no secrets involved. Um, I got bigger, I got stronger. I was able to take different supplements that allowed me to get bigger and stronger, whereas before I couldn't take them because I would bloat up and next thing you know, I'm weighing 270 plus and I'm not gonna make 242 and my body didn't feel good. So it was a lose-lose for me. So obviously supplements, gaining size played a factor in that, but it took all these things combined to really take my squat to the next level. So I hope you take away some things from this video. There's no magic pill. There's not just one thing that I did. It's a combination of many factors to take your lifting to the next level and everything matters. Have a good day. So much for watching today. Please subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed this video and have a wonderful day.